Good evening. Today we will be studying the habits of the student. We have given this student the name Brad. We will be following him through his course of his day at Parkside High School. Here we see Brad in his natural habitat. Damn, he spotted us! We have followed Brad to this location where he has tired out. Hopefully we'll be able to get a good shot of him now. Oh no, he's on the run again. Here we have tracked down Brad on his attempts to study. Hopefully we'll see him catching up on his educational work. Or not. Oh no, the alpha male. He seems very protective of his Bradley. Brad is attempting to bulk up in hopes to assert himself as dominant male. Apparently that's enough for today, eh hey Bradley? Ha <laughs> ha. Here we find Brad looking for a suitable mate. Oh, it seems like he's found one. Sadly for Brad, his attempts failed, and he is forced to try again at a later date. Canada's early history, anyone 14 or older Brad is here with his companions. It appears one of his companions has developed a non-verbal communication method. This student uses a cellular device in order to send words through his phone. Brad and Gordon? The dominant male is irritated with this form of communication and urges Brad to put away his phone. The criminal code was enacted in 1892. It created courts for youth, generally defined as between the age of 7 and 13. In 1908, the Juvenile Delinquents Act became law. The age range for delinquents. Clearly, Brad has not listened to the dominant male. Generally between 7 and 15. Gordon, Thus, the alpha male is forced to remove the problem. Your mother and father can come pick it up for me at the end of the day. Come on. I warned you. Brad is unhappy with having his celly removed. He has put an attempt to get it back. The alpha male does not approve. And Brad's attempt is foiled. It is the end of Brad's day, and he can finally make his way back to wherever he came from. And thus we say our goodbyes to Brad as he's left to fend for himself.